Kiana here for this month's Bean in Sync Insight. If you haven't seen a video in a while and you're wondering why I have these braces, you can check out my Invisalign Nightmare video. I'll put the link below. This month, I wanted to talk to you all about something that affects every single one of us, resistance. So I've broken this up into three different parts. You know, essentially, what causes people to be in resistance, both within ourselves and within our teams, within our relationships, within our families. Resistance is something that affects us both personally and professionally. It doesn't matter if you're a senior executive trying to get an initiative to go through or you want your kids to do their chores. <laughs> it affects us all. So I'm gonna be talking about what causes resistance? Just like the 15 most common, but I'm only gonna talk about three. I'm gonna give you the list of all 15 of the most common ways, uh, causes of resistance. Then I'm going to talk to you about what causes the reaction? Like what is the response of resistance? So as you become more aware of the response to resistance, you can say, oh, this is resistance. <laughs> and then you could go to the third part, which is I'm going to give you five different ways in which you can address it. I'm going to talk about two specific ones that I think would be most advantageous for you to implement, but you obviously look at all the different five and see which one resonates with you the most. Okay, so we're going to get into it one of the 15 most common causes of resistance is insecurity why is insecurity a cause of resistance well what is really going on with somebody who is insecure is that they are they don't have their own internal guidance so therefore they question everything okay and um if they're questioning everything it's because they don't have a guide as to how to trust. And so therefore, if you're presenting something to somebody who's got a high level of insecurity, um, they're gonna resist just because of what's going on within them. Um, that lack of inner guidance really is what causes them to go into this strong resistance. So insecurity is what I think is one of the biggest causes and that is aligned with worthiness but we're not going to get into worthiness right now <laughs> the second cause that i want to talk to you about is loyalty loyalty can cause resistance because people have a a blind faith if you will as to something else that is being um that it, they're connected to, that what you're presenting is causing a conflict. And I will say they're m probably not even conscious of it. And it might even be linked to an unconscious belief that's running in the background. They have just this implicit trust that causes them to go into a resistance just because they're so loyal to either a person, a situation, an event, or even a belief um, that is running their decisions as far as how they're going to respond. So loyalty is a big cause. So if you're in an organization and you're the new, uh, let's just say a new executive that's coming in and you are proposing some changes Perhaps they have some loyalty to the other person that's not even conscious to themselves. So um, I'm going to give you some ways in which that you can address this without having a direct conflict with them about what it is that they believe, think, or uh, are responding to. Because to challenge somebody's response isn't going to help you address the resistance. <laughs> And I think that's where most people fail when addressing resistance is they just, uh, they have one of maybe three ways they traditionally do it and they're not very effective. Um, so there was one more cause that I wanted to talk to you about one of the most common causes of resistance and this is love. 
And really, it's not true love. It's the illusion of love. They either have this deep-seated affection or um, love for the way they used to do things or the past or their ideas of the way things used to be. Even though it may not be true or accurate, they have it in their head that they love the old way. You know, so when people are in um, the illusion of love, they're not really uh, grounded in what's happening right now. And that causes them to be in resistance because they're so uh, enamored with a person, place, or an event that it causes them to go into resistance right away. Now, how might this play out with um, a relationship, right? So there are a lot of people that compare old partners and old situations to new events. And that always causes a conflict. And they most often are not aware that they're doing that. So love is a way in which people go into resistance because they feel like this connection that they know as their own truth is far greater than what you are trying to offer, whether it's a work situation and or a personal situation. When somebody is in the illusion of love, that's a very strong resistance. And there is no getting out of them changing their mind. So let's look at the 15 most common ways <laughs> in which resistance shows up. Well, I could probably create a list of hundreds, um, but I'm not going to. And I'm not even gonna talk about all 15 because we could probably go on in a whole video just about how it shows up. But I'm gonna talk about two specific ones that show up, whether you're a professional or personal situation, unconscious sabotage, the saboteur will show up all the time as a response to resistance. Now, I say unconscious because people are not even aware that they're sabotaging when it's occurring. And here is an indicator that somebody is doing it. They say no, and there's no inquiry. There's no explanation, there's no asking questions, there's no curiosity. The person says, nope, keep it moving. And I don't wanna do that, or no. And, and in fact, you know, we have uh, the terrible twos in which a whole generation of kids go through this whole part of their life where they've named the terrible twos because they're just in unconscious sabotage where they are just no, 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 no. They're just like exploring it for themselves. The problem is, is that many people are doing this and they're not aware. So if you see somebody that's in a no, no, no situation, well then you can identify that as resistance. And then you could say, hmm, I wonder if they could tell me more and ask them. And more often than not, they have not done their own inquiry and they're just reacting and responding in a habitual manner, which many people do. So that's not unique to um, this situation at all of resistance, it's just unique to the person. The other um, most common that I think would show up both in the personal and professional in a, in a strong way is arrogance. Now, arrogance is that I know better, Mr. Boss Man. You don't see what I see. I see it on a day-to-day -day basis and you don't see it. And that's kind of like a egoic um, arrogance that people will take on. Um, and just like a, I know better than you approach of arrogance is also a sign of resistance. Now. This is not to be confused with a narcissist, which is a persona that people take on. Arrogance is really a response to a particular situation, event, or person of which they are in resistance to. So I just wanna make that distinction between uh, arrogance and narcissist because uh, 
not everybody who is arrogant is a narcissist and uh, vice versa. So you just want to be uh, aware to not use these responses as a way of labeling people. Because as we'll get into right now, how we address resistance can be the game changer for your personal life. It'll make it everything much happier for you personally and professionally when you learn how to address it. Now, number one is you are best to address your own resistance on a regular basis. I mean, if you want to raise in consciousness, you need to get out of resistance and into acceptance. You know, that's just the long and short of it. Because when you are in a higher uh, frequency and vibration, you know, people can do whatever they want. And the only thing that really matters is how are you responding to them? Um, so the personal inquiry is huge. But let's just talk about when we meet people who are in resistance, how do we approach them? And there are five different ways in which I'm presenting to you. I'm only gonna talk about two. But the first one is one that I don't see used very often and it's very effective. And that is simply an invitation to join you. I feel if more people in corporate America, more managers and executives and leaders, if they invited their staff to join them on uh, creating a legacy initiative or creating a change initiative, instead of shoving it down their throats, they would be far more effective. So the invitation to join me is not a shoving it down somebody's throat. It's like, hey, I'm going to be creating this. I'd really love for you to join me on this journey. We're gonna have some ups and downs, but together we can make this happen. Would you be willing to join me? And that's a question. And every question deserves to have a response. And this is where most executives fail. They don't wanna hear the response. They just want it to happen and make it happen so they can move on to the other 20 things that they need to do. But what happens is, is these executives end up doing like a, a spray and pray. They put all these different initiatives out and they just pray that they stick. And if they just took the time to invite their staff, invite their organization to come on this journey with them, more often than not, these initiatives would go much further, be more effective, and get results faster. It's super simple. Invite people to join you, have them respond, and then you have a dialogue, and then, and then it flourishes. The other one is I want to say that the ego to ego will fail every single time. So if you're noticing somebody is uh, in a strong resistance, whether it's a, a partner in life, your children, or somebody, a coworker at work, the best way for you to proceed with them is to be open and receptive. Be curious about why they're that way. What is going on for them? What are they seeing that you're not seeing? How can they help help me help you help me help us? Like we're in this together, so how are we going to do this? And I think if we would be more open and receptive, then we would get progress a lot faster. The problem that I see oftentimes is we all kind of draw our, our battle lines, if you will. And that creates a, a fracture and or a, a discord within the relationship. When one person is open and receptive, it will change the entire dynamic between the, the, the two people and or a team. Being open and receptive is not a vulnerability, but a strength. Being open and receptive is going to make you more powerful, not disempowered. And I think if you try these tactics, both at work and at home with your children or partners, you would find that you have more of a dialogue for the direction that you wanna go. And maybe even there's a negotiation, or maybe they just, go along with you. 
So I hope you found this video helpful. Please share it and or follow me on YouTube. I would love to have you share my videos and witness what I have going on. I have another video coming out that's probably the most personal and provocative video that I've ever done. And it has to do with health and wellness, but specifically I'm gonna be talking about heavy metal poisoning and what that does to our systems and how that keeps us from moving forward in a very fluid way. So I thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. Cheers to being in sync.